welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be doing the hospital bag video. I apologize if you can hear the fan in the background, but it's pretty hot and I just wanna, you know, keep the fan on me. Um, yeah, so that's gonna be kinda going in the background there. Um, and then also, I apologize if you can't hear me that well, I am sitting kinda far away from the camera, but that's because I'm going to be showing you guys my bags and I'm going to be taking with me to the hospital. Um, this is part of a series I'm doing. Um, so far I have out my first trimester and second trimester videos. I will be doing a third trimester video. If you've been watching, you know that I am currently only 35 weeks. I'll be 36 weeks on Tuesday, but I did lose my mucus plug about 10 days ago. And this is my fifth baby. So history has shown for me in the past um, as soon as I lose my mucus plug, I do have the baby between 10 and 14 days every time. So I'm interested to see what happens this time, but that's kind of the reason why I decided to pack my bags already and get prepared, get everything set up because I just want to make sure that everything is going to be ready and, uh, I don't want to leave anything behind or be unprepared. Um, I did go ahead and create this really cute checklist that I have started to check off already. Um, I am going to be linking it down below for anybody who is interested, but it is a very handy checklist. I created a little section down here for you to make notes of your own, to add things that might not be on this list, things that you want, because it is a very personal um, experience and you want to be able to add things that are going to make you more comfortable or make you happy or make you more at ease because it is a pretty scary time, you know? Labor is very stressful, it's very hard on your body. Um, so you want things that are going to be, you know, calming and soothing to you, especially if you're not getting an epidural because let me tell you, I had three of my four without an epidural and it is extremely painful, extremely, extremely painful. Nothing can prepare you for that, so. Um, anyway, I'm not going to get into that right now, but I will go ahead and get started um, with my bag. I think I'm going to get started with the baby's things because they are right on top. And I do have everything packed, but I am going to be showing you um, everything. I'm going to take it out and just show you because I pack everything all nicely into cubes. Um, I have different types of packing cubes. And let's see here. This one I did not put in, but this is the cutest little swaddle that I used for my last baby and I love it. I decided to use it again. I am going to go ahead and link everything down below. Um, everything that I can find links for, some of these things I've owned for a long time, so I might not even remember where I bought them or if they were a gift. I don't know where they came from, but um, this little swaddle right here, I don't like swaddles typically but this is like a little blanket and it has the Velcro. You can put their little feet down in there and then you can wrap them up if they'd like to be wrapped. I've noticed that none of my babies like to be swaddled. They like their arms free. They wanna be able to move around. So that's why I like this one because it does have an option for you to leave it open so that they can move their arms or you can adjust it so that they can be hands free or have their hands up here by their face, whatever they like. So. Um, but typically I don't like swaddles. Um, I don't include them on my list, but again, that's why I have the notes section down there so you guys can adjust it, add whatever you want onto there so you don't forget it. Um, but yeah, so that is something that I've included in, um, I guess fuzzy blankets. I do have another baby blanket in here. These packing cubes I got on Amazon and I really like them a lot. And then I have some other ones. I can't remember where I got them. I bought them off a website, but um, it's like the brand website, so I'll have to find that. But again, I have a fuzzy blanket. It is a, you know, larger, not super huge baby blanket. They do provide you with lots of muslin blankets, which I do have on the list because every hospital is different. So not all hospitals are going to provide all the same things. The one that I've delivered all my babies at provides you with muslin blankets that have their little um it's like a little elephant is like their little um logo or whatever on it so i don't tend to bring lots of muslin blankets but i do bring a nice fuzzy one i am going to be bringing this one 
because it's a nice little swaddle. Um, however, this muslin blanket right here I have had for, I want to say, three, the last three pregnancies. It's very old. I don't know where I got it from, but it is super, super cute. It has the little um, Looney Tunes characters on it and it's just the cutest little blanket ever i love it so i do always bring this one with me in my hospital bag when i go but um i did put that on the list because it is something if you do decide to swaddle your baby if your baby does like like being swaddled a lot of the times these blankets are what you use and what they show you to use at the hospital and um yeah they can be folded and like they'll show you how to do it so yeah muslin blankets i have everything packed all cute in here as you can see so I also have on here a pacifier which not everybody likes to use but I find them uh, to come in handy I don't think any of my babies have really liked them um, you know some babies are like attached to them they have to have them like up until they're like two years old but none of my kids have been like that but I always bring it just in case because it is helpful I find especially in the very very beginning um, when a lot of times they're not hungry they just want to suck on something so this is a little um, stuffy that I have that comes with it. This is a Philips uh, Advent, Advent, excuse me, pacifier. So these are the ones I've always used. And I just like to have these because I find that they like to have things close to them. They feel more secure that way. So having this kind of sit on their chest while they're using it is, you know, it's comforting to them. But I think I put a clip. Yeah, I put a pacifier in a clip because I do have a clip somewhere. I'll link it down below. I just don't know where it is right now. And then I also have a going home outfit. I have a hard time choosing. So I have several little, I have two sweaters here. This one has little bear ears. One thing I do want to mention about the size of the clothes is that your baby, so you'll get an estimate from ultrasounds and stuff like that about, about how big, you know, they think the baby's going to be. It's not always accurate. You never really know the size of the baby until the baby's there so what I do is I try to include clothes that are going to be a little bigger but then I also include smaller ones because my last baby was only seven pounds and he was really really tiny and most of the newborn clothes that I had he was like still you know like swimming in them like he he was very skinny and just a small baby and um, so you never really know how big they're going to be so I try to bring different uh, sizes um, not necessarily like, you know, zero to three months or anything like that, but all newborn clothes run in like, some of them run small, some of them run large, depending on the brand. I find Cat and Jack from Target runs larger. So, um, Gerber is usually a pretty slim fit, um, uh, Carter's as well. So yeah, it just depends. Um, but like these are Cat and Jack, these are Cat and Jack and these are like little joggers, but I know that these would be big. So I'm just bringing different sizes depending because I never, I never know. But I typically try to bring, you know, two pairs of pants, two little sweaters, two onesies. I have this one and this one, short sleeve, long sleeve. Um, but yeah, I just try to find things that are, you know, this one's a little slimmer. This one's a little bigger. Just because you never know. So I do different sizes, but I have on the list going home outfits. But technically, I bring two outfits because I like to, you know, mix and match. You know, when they're first born, you like to put their cute little clothes on them when you're going to leave and see what looks the best. So, um, beanies or turbans. Turbans are really cute for girls. Um, the ones that are like the hats that wrap around have like the little knot at the top or like little bows, whatever. Um, you're going to want something that's going to cover their head because especially like in the first week or so, it's really important to keep their heads covered because they lose a lot of warmth out of their heads. So, um, yeah, I always buy beanies. These two I bought last time from somebody on Etsy, which I need to look her up, but I'm going to, um, link it down below. Everything's going to be down below that I can find. Um, but she custom makes these beanies. I bought them because I thought they were so, so cute and, um, they're awesome. They're super fuzzy. She hand makes them they're nice and warm um you can customize them you can decide like what you want on the little patches um this one says hello world and this one is like a little deer but yeah she has different little pictures for the patches different colors so 
I wanted to do something special instead of buying like an expensive outfit. I just bought these nice handmade beanies, you know, because I figure when my kids are, are older and they're having kids, you know, they could use them too. Like they're that nice that they'll be around, you know, so. And then socks are important. I always bring a couple pairs. Um, newborn socks, obviously, little ones. Um, okay, so this is probably a point of contention for some people. I don't particularly like the footed sleepers for newborns just because you're changing them so much. Um, it's kind of a hassle zipping, unzipping, or buttoning even, which I do have both a zipper and a button, which is funny. Um, these are both newborn ones that are super cute, and that's probably why they're in the bag because they're so cute. But I don't typically like these or include these in the bags just because you're constantly changing them. They're, you know, you're changing them like every hour, every hour and a half when they're newborns, so it's kind of a pain. Um, but yeah. I did include these in my bag. This one is not footed, this one is footed. The footed ones are kind of more convenient because like these ones you have to make sure they have socks on. But I do not have them on the list because like I said, I don't typically like them, but I do include them and some people like them. So I did include them this time. My favorite is going to be these long sleepers here. This one is like a little kimono button style. But the reason that I love these so much is because they not, they're not they knotted sleepers. You tie the little knot at the bottom to keep them warm and keep their little legs in there. And these ones are super, super easy to change them and get them in and out of if you have to. So I have that one. And then I also have this one as well, which is not a knotted one, but it's just like a gown. But they're just a lot easier. And that's what I tend to prefer to use when I am at the hospital and pretty much for the newborn phase in general it's just a lot easier than getting them in and out of um buttons or zippers or whatever so yeah those are the ones that i have and then let's see if i'm missing anything from here okay the only other thing that i have on here that i absolutely love which again is not a necessity that not everybody needs or uses but um announcement boards i have this really cute one that I used for my son, my last baby. I was able to wipe it clean so that I can just use it again. I didn't wanna buy another one even though they're not super expensive anyway. But I love taking the photos. I will insert a photo here with him, my last baby that was born um, with his little one. And then I'll also insert another photo of an actual big board that I used with my daughter that had like lights on it and stuff that was really cute. Um, but yeah, that's just kind of a personal little touch that I like to have. Um, and that just is like a special, you know, announcement photo. So I can just post it and people can see, you know, their weight, their height, all that, their name, what time they were born. Kind of helps you not have to answer as many questions from everybody because the picture says it all. All right, let me get this zipped back up and set to the side. So, yeah, my video does say hospital bag, but in reality I have two bags, and then I also have a little backpack that I'll be taking instead of my purse, because I find backpacks are easier, you can wear them, it leaves your hands free for you to carry your pillow, your blanket, whatever. So yeah, that is going to be for the baby. I'm going to move on to snacks, my favorite part. Now, snacks are important for not during labor unless, you know, you count your husband or partner, you know, having something to eat as well. Um, but obviously during labor you can eat, but afterwards, depending on how long you're going to be in the hospital, you're going to be really hungry. Um, they don't always have, I mean, they, they have meals, they feed you throughout the day, but um, you're going to be really hungry, at least I am. I'm always hungry, especially at the beginning. Um, your body went through a lot, so... I'm, I'm hungry all the time, I need snacks, so I bring plenty of snacks. Now I like these little granola bites from Target. These things are really good, they're very soft, just easy to snack on. I bring little fig bars. I am mostly a plant-based eater. I don't like to eat a lot of animal products, so a lot of these things do not include animal products. I got these little caramel-covered cashews. 
just little snacks, um, peanut butter, pretzels. Everybody has their own preferences for what they like to eat. But yeah, it's mostly just protein bars, fig bars. Oh, I also love these too. These are like little strawberry crumble bars. You know, just things that are good, protein, um, things like that. They're going to give you good energy. So snacks in between, meals, because you will be hungry. So I like to keep those in a little bag, within a bag, so I have them handy. Now, next thing on my list here. So these are part of your items that you're going to want to keep on hand. Um, I try to separate them. This little compartment one here, this is really for, um, I want to say like, it's kind of a com combination of like what I'm going to be using during labor and then what I'm going to be using like after too. I don't really know how to explain it, but I do have my liquid IV right here. These ones are the, they have probiotics. It's a kombucha type of drink mix. It's tart green apple. I love these because during pregnancy and then like after you deliver, you know, you're pretty constipated and after delivery, some women can't go for like days. I, I don't have that problem, but some women can't go for days. Like it's really hard for you to go. Um, so this is nice because this will help you go. Um, now these are kind of like little personal things that I like to have. This is a nice, um, silky little sleep mask. Um, sometimes the lights get overwhelming, um, especially during the day. Um, the nurses come in and out of the room all the time and it can be kind of frustrating because you're trying to sleep or your baby's asleep and yeah, but they'll be in and out. The lights will be on and off. It's so I like to, you know, just put this on sometimes and rest and relax. It's really nice. So this is a nice silky little sleep mask that I have. Um, I also have fuzzy socks with grippers on them um, for when you're having to move around. These are really nice. I have two pairs. I have one in my uh, labor bag and then I have one in my other little packing cube that has like my underwear and stuff like that. Um, belly oil or cream, butter, whatever you decide to use. This stuff is really nice. Um, it just kind of keeps you moisturized, um, especially after you deliver when your stomach is going to start going down. Some people, their stomach stays, you know, still in really enlarged for a long time. Mine tends to start going down like right away. So I like to have this with me. A um, couple hair ties. You're going to want these during labor. Not everybody's going to need them because not everybody has hair. But um, you do not want your hair in your face during labor. It's not pleasant. You're already sweating. You're already hot. You're already uncomfortable. You don't want to have to keep moving it out of your face all the time. So yeah, it's not fun. Um, so I have hair ties. I think it says hair ties or headbands. Some people prefer headbands. I am also going to be bringing my favorite little clips right now. I wear these constantly all the time. I love them. So I definitely put one of these in my bag. Now, this is one of the things I have in my note section along with the sleep mask, essential oils. This is a roll on one that I will use, you know, certain spots, temples, things like that. But then I also have these ones for smelling, which is peppermint and lavender. And then I have these little reusable cotton pads and um, this little container. Um, the reason that I have these, I have lavender and peppermint. I have used these during labor when I'm in a lot of pain and I'm not doing good. And I swear by them. Like they are very calming. I will sit there and just, you know, smell it, smell it you know, deep breathing and it really helps just kind of calm and relax, especially between contractions. Cause you know, when the contractions are hitting, I mean, it, it hurts. It's just nothing you can do, but in between when you're just trying to relax and get that relief for a little while, um, it's nice. It helps a lot. So I'm a firm believer in essential oils. I love them. I use them all the time. And then also I have this little ball it's used for, uh, counter pressure, acupressure, um, especially if you're having a back back labor using this ball having your partner use this ball rub it along your hip wherever you're getting that really intense pain I've been using this throughout the time period of me having sciatica it is a godsend it's amazing so 
especially in labor when you're having like back labor, it's, it's bad. So I always bring one of these. It's a huge help. And that's it for that little bag that I have here. And again, be linking everything down below, including the little packing cubes that I used. I just have to find where I bought these ones. I don't know, but I remember it was a website for sure. Okay, so I covered that. And then I also have a nice fuzzy towel. Now, you may be saying, they give you towels in the hospital. Yes, they do, but the towels suck. They're tiny, they're thin. Um, this last baby that I had, I actually went in the bathroom, realized after I had already started the shower, got all my stuff set up and was naked, that they didn't have a towel in there for me. So, yeah, um, bring in a towel for sure this time. This is a very big towel. It's very nice, very uh, fuzzy, soft and fuzzy, is what I was going to say. Um, so, yeah, I'm definitely bringing my own towel. I would recommend it because especially after... That first shower that you have after labor is amazing. It's incredible. And you don't want to be scratching at yourself with a tiny little rough towel. It's not fun. So, speaking of showers, I have my toiletry bag. Now, they do provide you with basics. Toothbrush, toothpaste, mouthwash, a tiny bar of soap, some combo shampoo conditioner. Um, but I like to have my own stuff, so... I bring all my own stuff. Um, you know, I shouldn't say they because I honestly don't know what your hospital is going to provide you with, but I'm assuming every hospital provides you with basic essentials like that. So in here I have my body lotion slash face lotion. I love CeraVe. I use this every day at home. So I have a small one for the hospital. I bought this bag on Amazon. And the thing that I love about this bag is it has a hook where you can hang it in the shower, in the bathroom, wherever you want, and just pull from it. It's amazing, it's a good travel bag. I still do have a toothbrush in here. I have cleanser. So I have all my little travel size toothpaste. I have my little wire brush here. So this is pretty much going to be tailored to you, what you, what you need, what you like, what you use. I have a little spray deodorant in here. I have my Dove, what is this, body wash. I have a shampoo and conditioner that I like. And then I also have another CeraVe cream. And my micellar water, which I love for taking off makeup. I do like to wear some mascara, lipstick, and stuff like that in labor, but once you're done, you really want to wipe clean because it's hard. You're sweating. You're not doing good. So um, even with an epidural, it can get still pretty messy, you know, sweaty and just uncomfortable. So this definitely would recommend um, a hanging bag like this it makes it a lot easier there's not at least in the hospitals that the hospital that i go to the rooms don't really have a lot of room to set things down so it's nice to have that bag that hooks on that you can hook onto the little towel rack there so that is it for my first bag that i have here and we're already at what 20 something minutes because i like to talk so my bad that this video is probably going to be extremely long but hopefully it will also be extremely helpful to anybody who is wondering what they should bring, what they might need, or is just looking for ideas. Um, this is my fifth time going to the hospital, so I've really kind of tuned it down to a science of what is ne necessary for me and what is not. So here's my favorite bag. This is my vintage Diane von Furstenberg suitcase. I love this thing very much. Um, it fits a ton of stuff, which is really nice. So, these things right here are my adult diapers. Now, I love these things. I just discovered them with my last baby. I've also seen people talk about the Frida Mom um, disposable uh, boy short underwear. So, I did include those on the list. I was going to try them out this time. I've not been able to purchase them yet. But I heard they are much, much better than the hospital ones. The hospital ones suck. 
but when I was in the hospital last time, I only used the adult diapers. These are the uh, period underwear by Always, I believe. I will link them down below. But these are amazing. I never had any problems, any leaks, anything like that. So I did put a bunch in this back pocket here. And I will be using those instead of the mesh underwear at the hospital. I don't like those at all. They're very uncomfortable. And they get super stretched out. They don't stay up well. I'm just not a fan. So yeah, those are definitely something I would recommend. I'm just making sure I'm not forgetting anything, but everything is in here. So you're going to want to bring sweaters because you will fluctuate from hot and cold, especially after the baby's born. Um, I tend to run really hot, so I typically don't get very cold, but I know some people do fluctuate badly between hot and cold during labor and delivery and then afterwards. So um, a big, nice cardigan that you can wrap baby in with you if you're choosing to breastfeed or if you're just doing uh, bonding skin to skin holding baby this is a nice type of cardigan to have that you just wrap around and uh, you know can snuggle them in with you and it's very comfy uh, nice and roomy I'm also bringing one of my favorite sweaters it is just a velour zip up sweatshirt I believe it's Victoria's Secret um, I love this thing I wear it all the time so I'm definitely going to be taking that with me now here I have just basics again these super cute packing cubes that help keep everything separated organized I live for that so another good sweater that I like to have is an open front cardigan so this is really awesome for breastfeeding if that's what you're doing um, it's so super easy just to pull it down and feed baby also again you can wrap baby not wrap him but um you can put him inside your sweater and just you know nurse him this way as well or her very very nice and i did find it to be pretty challenging postpartum finding clothes that are easy for breastfeeding without having to spend extra money on a whole new wardrobe so these type of pieces are functional for even after you stop breastfeeding. They're really nice. Um, you're going to want a nice pair of joggers to lounge in. These are my old Michael Kors ones that I've had forever. You're going to just want nice, comfy, loose clothes. Um, and also something else that I like for going home is a nice pair of postpartum or high-waisted um, leggings. They really help to support your tummy and make you feel better and just make you feel more secure after giving birth. Um, I have heard some people struggle really bad with um, their abdominal wall just feeling really loose and and just very, um, their entire midsection and center of gravity just very um, off balance just from going from, you know, baby to no, no baby so quickly. I don't have that problem really, so I don't worry about it, but these are very nice just for helping you feel like you're being held in and you know. So I love these. These ones are um, Under Armour. These aren't specifically postpartum, but there is another postpartum uh, pair that I love that um, I unfortunately threw out because I didn't need them anymore. Um, I got a hole in them too, I think. I wore them all the time with my third, but I will link those down below. And then, um, you know, this is another just kind of simple hoodie, something to wear home. You just want something nice and big and uh, comfy. So that's included in my list here, talking about leggings, joggers, or sweatpants, open front sweater, cardigan. I covered all those there. And again, Look at that, nice and folded, ready to go. Get stuffed back into my bag. Now, this one here has my jammies and my delivery gown. I know a lot of people don't think it's necessary, but again, I don't like the hospital gowns. They're not comfortable, they're itchy, they don't close in the back well, like I can't stand those things. 
So with my third, I invested in this beautiful gown here. This is a motherhood gown. And the thing that I love about this is that it snaps at the top, snaps down, or not down here, it snaps all the way up down here, and then it also snaps all the way down in the back. And it opens in the front right here uh, for breastfeeding, um, bonding skin to skin. And the thing I love about this is that if for whatever reason you have an emergency C-section, they need to tear it off, all they have to do is rip it open, it snaps right open, it's not gonna get ruined. It's a perfect house blue gown, I love it. I also have a robe, which this one is, what is this brand, I can't even see. Oh, Milkmaid, that's what it's called. I also bought this one a couple years ago, and it is amazing, it's super comfy, super cute. They have a lot of cute prints. I can't really open this up right now because I have it like tied. But um, this is nice. It's just another extra layer of, um, what do you call it? Just being able to cover up if you're cold, whatever. Um, it's really, really nice. I love it. And I wore it with my last two deliveries. I will be wearing it with this one. And for after delivery, you're really going to want PJs to sleep in that have buttons if you're breastfeeding because it's very easy access. Um, I have both this dress here. These ones I buy from Target from Stars Above is the brand. I have had these for years. Um, these are very nice for breastfeeding. I wore these well into my postpartum period as well. Um, but yeah, button up, button down. Um, also postpartum they're going to be checking you uh, for bleeding and all that to see how your bleeding is going to make sure you're not bleeding too much um, also makes it easy because that way you're just like mm, there you go and then um, I have also a set that is a shirt and some shorts you just want something nice something loose something that is going to be comfortable for you um, if you do happen to have a C-section, you really don't want anything that's going to be constricting, that's you know, gonna be brushing up against that fresh incision, that painful area. So um, I have never had a C-section, but I have heard many things about how painful and uncomfortable they can be. So you also wanna keep that in mind because you never know how your labor and delivery is gonna go. So you just wanna keep that in mind when packing. Um, things, just make sure you keep it light, keep it loose keep it airy and I think the only other thing I have in here is going to be look at this came with my set that I bought a little shoe bag here these are my shower shoes um, I don't want to be standing on a hospital floor especially in a bathroom with no shoes on so I have my little sandals uh, these are Crocs um, I'm not really a big fan of Crocs but again these were like 10 bucks shower shoes so I just wear them in the shower and that is all that's what they're there for so that is going to be everything that I have packed up here I have one more thing to go over on my list which is going to be day of items that you're going to want to grab when you're leaving oh wait I'm sorry I forgot this here one more thing this small bag here is going to have a couple other items in there Another pair of the grippy socks like I talked about earlier. And I have a breastfeeding tank top, which is really nice because it just clips down. You don't have to wear a bra. This is one of my favorite ones. Um, I got this from Target, it's Isabelle Maternity. It's really, really nice. Um, I love this thing. I have a very large chest. It's usually hard for me to find items that fit properly, that can actually be very supportive without having to wear a bra, but this one is one of my favorites. I've had it for years. Then I have one of my Shaper Mint tank tops. If you guys have seen my previous videos, I love these. I live, live for these. These are amazing. So, oh, excuse me. I have one of these in there as well. And I have two bras. I have a regular nursing bra. This is also from Target. Uh, this is motherhood again 
um, just a clip down nursing bra. This did have pads in it once upon a time, but who knows where those are. I've had this for years. And then also my favorite bras of all time, which are the Kindred Bravely uh, nursing pumping bras. These ones can clip down for you to use for pumping or they can clip down for you to use for nursing as well. So these are my favorite. So you want to be bringing at least two nursing bras if you're planning on nursing, nursing tank top. And then um, I also have a regular tank top because I have nursing bras as well. So um, another thing I wanted to mention is boy shorts so they give you these really nice giant unattractive pads um, depending on blood flow you may not need to be wearing um, the period disposable panties that I showed you or the free to mesh ones you might not want to wear those I always bring boy shorts sometimes I prefer to wear these instead or I want to wear these going home instead of you know my diaper essentially so I always include two pairs of boy shorts. These are Victoria's Secret. These ones are Parade. Um, they're very comfortable, very soft. And then I also bring a hair towel for um, the shower. So I want to have a towel to dry my hair. That's how we do it at home. So that's how I want to do it at the hospital as well. So that is all. I finally got everything covered and we are at 36 minutes so not as bad <laughs> so I thought it was gonna be um, but the reason that I love this suitcase here is I can stuff all of this in here and I got this years ago at Goodwill for about seven or eight dollars and it's Diane von Furstenberg vintage it's my babe I've had it for years and then I mentioned again earlier about having a little backpack. It's a lot easier to carry. It's what I have in here. It's a mini backpack. Mini backpack, but it's very large. Um, I have everything in here. Um, so that's what I was going to talk about next is day of things to grab. There are some items that you are going to want to grab the day that you're leaving for the hospital. And that's going to include a phone charger and I suggest getting a long cable, the ones that are like six feet, eight feet, I think they even make 12 feet cables. Um, you never know where that charger is gonna be, or I'm sorry, the outlet is gonna be by your bed. So you wanna make sure you have a long cord that's gonna stretch to your bed. Um, large cup or tumbler, like my favorites, my Yetis, my Stanleys, you're gonna want that because, especially if you're breastfeeding, you're gonna be losing a lot of water um, you need to rehydrate and uh, you know, some hospitals provide big cups um, the one I go to usually does but it's a plastic one so I smell quickly it doesn't stay cold I love my drinks to be cold so I always bring my own cups um, your wallet um, you're gonna want your ID insurance card all that and cash cash is very important because um, if it's you if it's your husband whoever it is make sure somebody has cash Make sure somebody is carrying cash. Um, they feed you at the hospital, but they're not gonna feed your partner. Um, if he wants to go to the cafeteria, wants to get something to eat, whatever, you wanna have cash on hand. I would send my husband to go get food for me as well. Um, but yeah, it's just important to have the cash on hand. Um, I did include a camera or a laptop. I know some people have work that they need to do or they want their laptop just for whatever reasons. Some people wanna bring their cameras so they can record everything. Uh, my hospital does not allow video recordings during delivery, but um, I always use my phone anyway, so it's really not a big deal. You can take photos, you just cannot take videos. I'm sure it's for legal reasons. Um, a heating pad. Now the reason I put that on day of is because me personally, I use my heating pad constantly. I need it all the time. I can't have it packed away when I need it, so I put that on day of. You want your car seat? Um, I would suggest already adjusting your car seat to be um, f for the right size, because you know it has all the little um, places for you to put the straps and all that, and the little um, button in the bottom. So about it explaining things. I'm gonna insert a picture right here. 
I actually the other day took one of my kids stuffed animals and I fitted him in there because I figured he was about the size of a baby so I used that to adjust the car seat so I have the car seat out in the car in the back of the car I have a um I have a what are they called it's like a it's like a smaller SUV SUV like a hatchback type of thing it's a Lexus um an RX it has like that little hatchback thing in the back that's where my car seat's sitting now waiting because I have a feeling it's going to be very soon that we're going to be needing it. So I did prepare that already. But if you don't keep it in your car, if you don't have room, just have it handy and grab it day of because you're going to need it. They won't let you leave the hospital without it. Obviously, right? Um, I put snacks on here, but as I showed you, I already packed my snacks. I'm prepared for that. Um, pillows and a blanket I put on here. I did bring my pillows last time. And... Honestly, these are the pillows that I use. They're very nice memory foam, cushy. I have nice um, satin pillowcases. I know it sounds like a weird thing to take, but it is so nice to be able to have your own pillow, um, something that is comfortable for you, something that reminds you of home. It's just really nice to have that with you when you're at the hospital. And, um, I had never brought them before last time and I was so happy that I did because the pillows that they have too are also super uncomfortable. Um, and then a blanket as well. A blanket's not necessary, but I like to bring an extra blanket so that my husband has something nice because um, I think with my third, I didn't bring one and he had to sleep with like the crappy little hospital one and I felt bad for him because yeah, not comfortable. And also, the last two things on the list are going to be your makeup bag if you wear makeup and your prenatal vitamins. So that's something you don't want to forget. Even though they will, I'm sure, have vitamins to give you if you need, um, it's just better to have your ones that you like, that you prefer, if that's the way that you are. So, yep, that sums it up for my hospital bag checklist. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have anything to add, any questions, comments, anything like that, go ahead and leave them down below. And I will be linking this list and all of the items that I discussed and showed you guys down below as well. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you guys next time when I'm going to be talking about postpartum items, uh, postpartum essentials, I guess you could say. And then I'll also be doing a newborn essentials video as well. So. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.